Well, my name is Olaf Sandy, and I was born in Germantown, Pennsylvania, and I was born in 1917, 12th of September. Well, when I first went on board the ship, I was just a seaman apprentice, and after a while I became a, a fireman sec second class, and then I became first class machinist mate. And in the duties of that, it was I was down in main engine control and, and uh, was in charge of, uh, of watches, whatever watch came on, and we lighted the sh engine off and secured it or whatever had to be done. When you, you first start out, you, st you get the, the temperature up on your engines, and uh, when you get underway, you get your enunciator bell of whatever RPMs you want to run, and then the th throttle, this is a ratio of 40 to 1 on the throttle, and of course the stern is just a plain ratio, and uh, whatever RPMs that you want, you have to bring it up on the, your enunciator up here, and uh, you maintain your RPMs. And uh, there's always an officer on watch here to suppose to maintain whatever temperature you, or degrees or whatever it is, he's supposed to make sure that everything is done right. If, if in the event it, uh, which happens sometimes, you had to back down with emergency astern, then the person would take and open the, the bypass valve for the 600 pound line to the, the low pressure turbine, and you would break this off at the same time you would take and break your steam down. Now what you would do is bring the steam pressure up to 600 pounds of pressure, and uh, you have a half an hour, uh, f uh, five minutes to, to break the temperature down. But uh, the, the throttleman here would take and uh, uh, close the throttle off and open this at the same time. And when he opens the throttle valve, he watches the steam pressure so that uh, the guy in the boiler knows that he's going to take all the, the steam, uh, the, all the oil he needs. You know, they have 13 burner barrels in there, and he, you're taking the put the air onto it to get the, the heat up. And when he breaks this off, he starts to wind this down at the same time and he watches the steam gauge and he brings it down. When, when he's got the throttle closed, he's going to give a big turn there so that the guy knows that he can take anything he can give him. So then it, you back the ship down. The ship should actually back down on, the, on its own length. When you get a reading from the, the bridge, the bridge sends it down to main engine control and main engine control, there's a double c connection here. Whatever numbers you read up on the, on the main engine control, it'll read up on all the fire rooms and all the engine rooms. And it'll also give you the annunciator over here if in the event that uh, it's supposed to be uh, backing down or forward or three quarter speed or whatever it is, that that's reads up here. The noise is the whistle of just like a turbine engine on a, on a plane. It, uh, it uh, turns around and uh, you get the whistle. You have uh, 600 pounds of pressure, steam pressure at 850 degrees. You have 12 stages on the main engine and you pass that steam through the 12 stages and then when the 12 stage is off you have about two and a half pounds absolute pressure to the low pressure turbine and it goes through the t low pressure turbine and at about two and a half pounds absolute pressure, and then it comes down to about three eighths pounds pressure. Then it goes into a vacuum, and vacuum, of course, is inches below atmospheric pressure. So, at sea level is 14.7 tenths inches of vacuum, or uh, pressure at sea level, and you go down into the vacuum, and the more vacuum you can make, the more power you have and, and more efficiency you have on, on the turbine. We got stuck in the Panama Canal, uh, the ship wouldn't move because the, the donkeys that take the ship through the canal locked itself in and it scraped the side of the, the ship and it really, real hot. So what they did, they took one, the two port uh, screws and gave it a fast turn to try to unlock it and then the, the donkeys took it through. But uh, that was the only time we ever had any problems with that. And uh, it, it was just the best operating ship that there was. As a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Hammond uh, was awarded uh, from, from Nimitz uh, for having the most efficient operating battleship in the fleet. I gave up chief so that I would stay on board the Massachusetts because 
everything on the Massachusetts was good. We worked hard and we did good work. And if the job wasn't done right, you would get hell for it. Uh, my name is Robert Webster. I was born in Grand County, Kentucky, uh, on a farm. When the war broke out, I was looking for a job in Covington, Kentucky, which was like 50 miles from where I was born and raised on a farm. And uh, uh, Pearl Harbor Day, we had uh, been out on the farm and was going back to, uh, to Covington. And uh, when we got out of the car at my uncle's house, uh, uh, President Roosevelt was on the radio saying that Pearl Harbor had been bombed. So at that time we knew, uh, you know, we was going to be in, in the war. So uh, then uh, uh, I, my dad was in World War I and he had told me a lot of stories about foxholes and rain and sleet and hail and all that stuff that he had to waller in while he was in, in uh, Germany. And I didn't want to get involved in that sort of thing, so, and I liked the Navy uniform, you know, I thought the women all liked that a little better than they did the Army uniform, so I chose the Navy. So I joined the Navy in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, that was in November of 42. And uh, they treat us real nice, you know, swore us in, treat us real nice and everything. We, oh man, we're, we're in the Navy now. And uh, they actually swore us in in a circle. You know, at uh, Fountain Square in Cincinnati and, uh, on the radio, and this was a big deal, you know. As soon as we swore in, we were sworn in, they lined us up and said, Okay, USPs, line up, you're in the Navy now, get going. You start cussing us and all that. I was like, oh, man, what am I into here? They sent me to the University of Great Lakes, Illinois, and I took steam engineering, mechanical drawing, blueprint reading, and all the related subjects to uh, steam engineering and and uh, that feel. My assignment was to watch the punt, uh, pumps, all the water pumps and uh, uh, the related uh, uh, equipment uh, that went. Uh, you had to recycle the oil. Um, the oil that you use and uh, all the equipment had to be renovated and you renovated that back into good oil and use it over again and all that. Um, many things happened in the time I was on here, but one of the things, uh, one of the main sh bearings went out in number two engine room. Uh, the, the bearing for the 16-inch uh, shaft had got overheated, and um, we had to tear that bearing down and uh, had to shut the engine down, had to shut number two uh, engine room down, and we were in the fleet um, at that time uh, getting ready. I believe we was going into truck. Uh, for the invasion there, and uh, we, when we shut the engine down, then we had to fall out of the fleet, and, and uh, this was a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, scary because you're sitting duck when you, you know, when you're sitting out there by yourself. But uh, we worked on that all day, one day, and all night, and all night, all day the next day, repairing that, uh, repairing that. Uh, uh, big bearing had to be tore apart and scraped and put back together while the ship was underway. Well, the first battle was in Gilbert Islands. Uh, scared the heck out of me because you know I was just been bored for a little while and they announced 35 planes coming in at us one time and I thought, man, I just got out of here and I'm going to be killed already. So that was a little frightening, but uh, of course it didn't get any better than that. My name is John Garris. I was born uh, December the 4th, 1919, in Catonsville, Maryland. Jobs are very hard to find. I decided that uh, I would go in the Navy and uh, see the world. So I joined the Navy on May the 10th, 1937. And I went to uh, NTS, that's the Naval Training Station in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. And I went through boot camp there, which was at that time three months of training. The training and uh, knowing how to operate the ship had to be done before the ship was ready to go to sea. So there was a nucleus crew which is stationed in Quincy right next to the uh, Four River shipyard. And they were all on uh, TDY, which was, you were on sub sub substance on the beach. As, uh, as my highest rank in the engine room, which was chief, uh, which was first class before I was transferred, was uh, to oversee all the junior men. 
like the two, the second uh, class man on the on the lube oil pumps to go down, make sure he's doing his job, make sure that the pumps are running okay, that he was uh, on watch, wasn't sleeping, and and so forth, and uh, that the messenger was going around every hour taking his readings, and I had duties to do too to check things to see that everything was going right, make sure no hot bearings, make sure that the oil's level in the uh, reduction gears here was uh, at the proper level, and and things like that. The chief, uh, of course, he's a uh, directly under the, uh, the watch officer. And number three engine room, the battle station for the chief engineer was in number three engine, which was a control engine room. We could read all the gauges, the steam gauges, and everything from the other engine rooms. So on that watch, there was a chief right in front of that gauge board all the time. There was a throttleman who uh, managed the throttles, and there was a uh, second class down on the uh, level on the feed pumps, second class machinist made. Second class machinist made down between the reduction gears on the fuel oil pumps on the uh, lube oil pumps, rather. And uh, there was, as I say, a messenger going around taking readings every hour. Uh, and that, uh, that was one watch on the en and the engine room crew. So we made a turn that I know no battleship probably has ever uh, t listed that much uh, that I ever, <laughs> ever heard of. We had uh, things like the chief engineer's director chair sliding down across the, the checker plates and rag can sliding across the checker place and everybody's just holding on keeping from sliding across the checker place. We said, what's going on on the top side? Because we never knew. And uh, the guy who, who uh, was on the phones up on the sm uh, smoke watch, he called down and said that three torpedoes passed on one side and one passed on the other side. That the turn got us in between those two and saved us from being hit by the torpedoes. When we fired uh, the 16s any time, even during gunnery practice, in the engine room, you didn't, well, of course, during gunnery practice, you knew you weren't going to be hit, but you didn't know what the explosion was, whether something went off accidentally or whether we were, the guns were going off. In the Casablanca, we didn't know whether we were being hit or whether the guns were, the 16s were going off. And every time they fired the uh, guns or, or any kind of explosion took place on the top side, a, a cup full of rivets would uh, come down out of the ventilators land on the floor place and bouncing like hell, you know. And Norman Davison, D-A-V-I-S-O-N, no D in the middle. I was born in New York City in 1922. After boot camp, I went to um, diesel school in Richmond, Virginia. And uh, they were placing people on uh, when they graduated there, they were placing people on PT boats, anywhere there were diesel engines. So uh, Ma Massachusetts had some diesel engines. So we were shipped up to Boston, and I joined the ship in Boston. I had one foul up, which could have been bad. Uh, in my, one of my pump room watches, uh, the pump got hot, uh, and I turned it off. And, and all of a sudden, there was a, all the gold brave was in the room there with me, and... Uh, Seems that was the only water main for fires or anything else at the time. So uh, I didn't get caught martial, but I was three months of compartment cleaning. By that time, I looked around and I thought, who had the cleanest uniforms? The electricians. So I asked to go in the electrical division. And I went into the uh, battery shop with my first assignment. Uh, the 16-inch turrets all had batteries in them for emergency firing. And we used to have to go around and test those batteries constantly, bring them back. We had a battery charging station, charge them, bring them back. And one of my funniest things is we used to have to carry them. And, and batteries, you know, it's like a car battery, only it was a little big, it seemed. And the first time I came back from the laundry, I had a hole here where I carried the, my shirts all had holes there where I carried the batteries. They acetate them right out. I steam, my steaming watch was in num, engine room number two. Well, we used to take uh, readings on the, uh, every hour on the, uh, the, the boards there. And uh, just recorded, I guess, nothing else. And then uh, we would get a call that they needed the, another generator on and we would have to hook up the second generator to the, to the one that was always running. But we got a call that uh, when they wanted to turn the turrets for the 16-inch guns, they needed a lot of extra energy. And uh, we had to put the second generator on. And in alternating current, you had to 
come in at the exact same curve in, in the current. And uh, you had a switch uh, on the switchboard, you had uh, the two needles going. And you had to turn it, the engine on when the two coincide. I had to watch the starboard shaft spin around, which is the one that turns the propellers. And it was the hardest place to get to. And I had this one, you had to lift up the hatches. And you know, you, you would hold the, bottom, the handles were on the bottom of the hatch. And I had the handles and the hatch closed on me and I'm hanging there. And there's no one within, it seemed like miles to, to yell for. And, I finally just uh, dropped. <laughs> it was a scary experience, but I landed on my feet.